welcome back to Open Your Eyes. Joining us now is Dr. Shana Pott and also Ms. Ivorine Bulwer, who is the Executive Director of HelpAge Belize, and Mr. Evan Dakers, who is the Chairman of HelpAge Belize. Good morning. Good morning. Pleasant good morning to you and good morning to Belize. And um, we're here now to talk about a very important issue which may sometimes get overlooked in society, and that is HIV among um, older persons. Um, first of all, maybe we can start out with a definition. What do we mean by an older person or an elderly person? Mm. Uh, okay, an older person is considered someone 60 years and over. Mm -hmm. That is considered elderly. That is the definition of elderly. Definition, yes, the definition of an mm -hmm. And in terms of talking about HIV now, uh, we might, it's a somewhat overlooked area. Um, the, you know, we always hear about, you know, the rates among young people and the growing rates around young people. We don't often think that it's something that affects older people as well. Exactly. And so, like, even in the clinics, even um, healthcare providers, when it comes to screening, when the elderly comes into the clinic, it's, it's seldomly a question that we ask them. We hardly ever ask them about their sexual life. Or, you know, they come in, we'd ask them about aches and pains and diabetes and hypertension, but hardly ever anything regarding would you like to do a HIV test. It's something that we offer more to the younger generation. So even we overlook it, you yeah. know? Yeah. You know, and this is why we're going to talk about it. Because okay. if you look at the Ministry of Health statistics, you look at the 2016 statistics and the last statistics that came out earlier this year for 2017, mm -hmm. you're seeing that there is an increase of HIV positive among older persons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for example, um, 2017, uh, 30, 000, over 30,000 cases, tests were done by the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. and over 6,000 plus were done by other um, entities outside of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And of that, you had 233 positive cases. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the, the statistics for older persons, between 50 and 65, there were over 20 new, newly diagnosed newly. cases. Newly. newly diagnosed cases. And um, what, is, what is very concerning is that screening is not being done mm -hmm. for older persons. Yeah. And then what happens is that when quite a number of older persons are diagnosed, it's because they're already with some co-infections. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're the state where they're, you know, as older persons, their, their immune system goes down. Mm -hmm. And if we look at our statistic, our health statistics, or older persons have quite a number of chronic disease problems. Yeah. And with HIV, it's a problem. Yeah. But we need to also recognize that our older persons are having sex. Mm -hmm. We're having the, the phenoma, phenomena of older men and younger women, mm -hmm. and older women and younger mm -hmm. men. They are having sex and they are having unprotected sex. If I could just jump in from a um, male-female perspective, because yeah. the statistics also raise that issue. And um, I'm reading from the statistics that came from the Ministry of Health, and they are saying that they had a test of, they, were the, they had contacted over 30,000 people mm -hmm. And um, countrywide, and of those that were tested positive, there was more males than females. Mm -hmm. But even more telling was the fact that the male population, as you get older, um, it increases. Wow! For new infections. Infections increases. Yes. So, for example, um, after you jump 64, the male incident rises. 
and and that that is troubling mm -hmm. as a man, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> it begs the question: then what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, these guys are, as I've already said, they are very active, mm -hmm. and the perception is that, of course, well, after you jump a certain age, you know, mm -hmm. that activity just, tends yeah. to decrease. What what I um, what studies have showed is probably that the older the older generation you know they're more they don't they're not at the age where they're thinking oh I can get pregnant or yeah. you know so they just have unprotected sex and it's happening and yeah so therefore which, which leads them to, to contracting any sexually any transmitted, sexually transmitted but infection but also HIV <coughs> so so one of the things in, in hearing these numbers, the first question that comes out to me is, 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 because you said new infections, could it also be, it could be two things. Clearly, human sexuality, there's no end date, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so people are continuing to have sex, mm -hmm. most likely unprotected if they're contracting HIV. Yes. But there's also the fact that men don't typically access health care until they start to get ill or feel maybe the effects of aging. So could it also be that they have had HIV and it's, detected when they start accessing yes. healthcare as an elderly person? And sometimes not only that, but they get to the point where they become re very ill, you know, and so they come into the health, the health facilities and I'm sure they're not thinking HIV, yeah. you know, but because of these opportunity, opportunistic um, illnesses that they start to present, mm -hmm. there is when we will think, well, let's do an HIV test to rule out HIV in them and sometimes yeah. it's already full-blown AIDS. So mm. that's a, we actually see somewhere it's at the point that we cannot help them anymore because it's at a, at a terminal stage. Terminal yeah. stage. Yeah. And I think also we need to add to that, we are looking at sometimes you see an older person presenting with some form of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And then, OK, that person has some breathing problem. OK, probably having some problem with his, with his or her heart, you know, with his HIV. Or you can see an older person may looking frail, start mm -hmm. losing weight. Right. We have the misconception, oh, it's aging, mm -hmm. you know, eating less. Or, or even if they have comorbidities, mm -hmm. you know, such as diabetes and all of these, so they are thinking, well, this is due to my diabetes, this yeah. is due to probably problems with the kidney. And so yeah. they're not thinking HIV, which is what, um, let me just uh, bring up the lack of education in the elderly as well. Yeah. Because even as healthcare providers, we target a lot of the younger groups. Like we're going to schools, to mm -hmm. wherever youths are gathered. Mm -hmm. But when has anybody asked the healthcare provider to come and speak to an elderly group about HIV? Mm -hmm. Hardly ever, or never in my case. Mm -hmm. So I've been asked to speak to elderly groups, but in regards to, you know, chronic illnesses. Yeah. But, but not never, HIV. Never HIV. Of course, there is that stigma, of course. Yeah. Because, I mean, come on, Grandpa, you, you still do that thing? Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. but another issue I want to oh, bring up. We have up. to be realistic. <laughs> 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 the data. But one of the other issues has to do with the whole issue of the fact that you have medication now that is there to prolong sexual um, mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. and I'm talking about yeah. Viagra and other, yeah. mm -hmm. other yeah. drugs yeah. and as a man I am familiar with it I have never used it by the way mm. but <laughs> I have also <laughs> 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 but, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> but I, I am certain that there has been some serious side effects yeah. to the point where I can't say conclusively but there have been some deaths that uh, very suspicious in terms of mm. how I knew the person prior and yeah. what happened suddenly after, you know? Yeah. And, and I believe that, um, that, that that is a contributing factor because, of course, we are following first world countries, you know? And, well, and I think what you bring up is, is a valid point. <coughs> Access to medication, longer lives, um, I guess a more openness in society as well. And, and just... I feel like talking, having this conversation about uh, the sexuality of the elderly population, it almost feels as taboo as when we try to talk mm -hmm. about, oh, you know, children are having sex too and people don't want to hear it. Something yeah. about it they don't want to hear. 
But the reality is mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. We know kids are having sex from 14. Mm -hmm. We know the elderly population is having sex. But are we giving them enough education to protect themselves in whatever choice they choose to make? We're not because we're not shedding light, as you say. We're not thinking that, or we're close to the yeah. idea that the elderly are sexually active. Yeah. You yeah. know, so there is a lack of education there. So yeah, but you don't feel it because you know, HIV, you're, you're, if you look at the data, it's saying it's on the increase. Mm -hmm. Where is the where the impact? Are you feeling the impact? Do you see the posters? Um, the statistics are, are showing the increases among all age groups. Yeah. Um, one need to look what then is being done. What services? I mean, it's good enough to offer the the, the antiretroviral drugs. The amount of education you're talking about older persons who have retired mm -hmm. um, or not working. Mm -hmm. They don't have an income or their pension is minimal. The access, the access to, 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 to services. Mm -hmm. Where is the um, counseling services offered to persons who want to, if they need to get tests, where is that financial support? And so these are some of the issues we're looking at. Yes, the data is there. What support exists? Yeah. And I think, Marilyn, is something that, and, and Mr. Gavin. Courtney. Yes. <laughs> something very important that we need to look at because the data showing our young persons are dying 233 deaths for for 2017 who are those persons what age group and you we have anecdotes that you have persons dying mothers dying single head single-headed home mothers dying who looking after those children their grandmothers mm -hmm. They are caregivers. Mm -hmm. Where is the support? So you have all these cases, but the support services, critical. Yeah. Social, financial, the educational aspect. And those are certain burdens that yeah. um, are placed on, on, on older population, older persons. You, you mentioned a word earlier, and, and I think that we need to bring it into the conversation mm -hmm. and bring it into the public discourse as well. And that's ageism. We are, for a long time, I know we've been talking about this, that we must accept that what was a large population of young people will one day become a much larger population of elderly persons. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of things that take place as a person age, including feeling ostracized, like they're not included in the society, they don't have opportunities. Mm -hmm. We talk tirelessly about priority lines and priority areas that they need to have. Um, we have one clinic that does work with exclusively elderly persons, and BFLA does some work with them as well. Um, but clearly, this particular group is not getting the attention it needs. Would you agree? Fully agree, Marlene. And um, <laughs> one of the, I just want to segue, if you don't mind, yeah. into the team, because United Nations, as you know, have a theme for the International Year of Older Persons. Yeah. And the theme is, as Ms. Bolwa said, the journey to age equality. Mm -hmm. And among some of the objectives that they are looking at, and I want to just read from my text here, it says that we also need to take this opportunity to reflect on best practices, lessons, and progress on the journey to ending old age inequality and changing negative narratives and stereotypes involving older age. And those stereotypes include what we were saying a while ago that, um, oh, yeah, man, um, granny not supposed to, they, you know, she's supposed to, they relax, where she they do out right now, where mm -hmm. she they do out, the party, mm -hmm. like what we have at Help Page in Belize City, and I do it in Bermapan, by the way. Okay. But there is still that feeling that once you reach a certain age, it's like you close down certain facets of your life, and that's not true. Yes, you cannot jump as high or whine and come up back as you used to, but <laughs> it's still in your head. You still yeah. want to enjoy yourself. Yeah. And what this is saying is that we need to look at those stereotypes and, and try to work on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the amount of agencies in Belize that are working with the elderly is pretty small. Mm -hmm. Help page, everybody knows, but 
there are smaller little groups, and I'm talking specifically of religious groups now, mm -hmm. who do their own thing. I'm familiar with the Catholics. I think it's called St. Vincent de Paul. I know the Adventists. And all these different denominations, in their own little way, they work with the elderly. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to raise the profile. I am involved in a number of these organizations. Um, in Belmopan, Helpage is yeah. basically ecumenical. Mm -hmm. We try to bring in our denominations. And because of that, I get to know what some of these churches, quote are unquote, doing, are yeah. doing. And it's surprising. I mean, sometimes you would say, well, Miss Mary doesn't have anybody to take care of her, or she needs a plate of food maybe two times a week. We give yeah. meals in Belmopan. So I said, so what happened with the other five days? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Mr. Dacus. St. Vincent de Paul do this. The other groups do this. So there are little initiatives going on around, but it, it is not fully developed. And of course, sustainability. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's an issue. We have a problem at Helpage, and Ms. Bulwark can talk all day on that. But we are always trying to ensure that we have enough not only finance, but the human capital to help us meet these demands, you know, but it's a constantly, it's a, it's a, it's a catch-up game. Yeah, but I also need to add on very, very important, you know, you're talking of some of those basic needs as food and clothing, but it's more than that or older person are, have rights to. It's part of their constitutional rights. And our government have signature to certain conventions they have signed, they have ratified. And you want to look at areas of care access. Mm -hmm. There are certain health conditions that are, are, are common, are com comes with aging. Mm -hmm. Where is the screening processes? Mm -hmm. Where is the services? You're talking about so social. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the, the mental, as mental health aspect. People are diagnosed with certain things. They need that support. They need that level of counseling. Mm -hmm. They need the financial support. We we recognize that persons who may retire from government have a small pension. There may be a small social security. Also, I think very, very important, and it's something that we will have to work with our sister partners to address the issues of um, older persons. They have prepared themselves for some level of preparedness for old age. Yeah. But when it comes to their assets, their wills, mm -hmm. I mean, there is gross violation, abuse. Yep. And so you have got to look at agitating for laws because it is extremely sad. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the radio or, or, or the homes of older persons are invaded, they are being abused, they are killed. And so this is a, it's, it's an issue coming to yeah. the forefront that we must address and have laws because Persons sign over their properties, have individuals control of their finances. And when those older persons reach that stage of dependency, it's okay when they have that level of um, being active. When they reach that state of dependency, life for them become a hell. Yeah. And Okay, I was, I was going to say that, that that's a very important um, point that you bring up, especially mm -hmm. in relation to uh, the issue of HIV, because we, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, the increase in new cases, but mm -hmm. we also have to talk about after diagnosis, treatment, living with the disease, mm -hmm. it's ongoing, and mm -hmm. you need that uh, support financially and otherwise. Yes. Um, well, in Belize, we're very fortunate that the medication is given free, mm -hmm. and there, you know, even the care itself. What happens when it comes to treating elderly um, people is that, you know, it takes a multidisciplinary approach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because a lot of them are faced with comorbidities and are already on some type of medication or may already f have um, kidney and liver failure, which would complicate things when it comes to the treatment. Since mm -hmm. these medication, they're metabolized by the kidney by the liver and mm -hmm. are excreted from the kidney. So it's, you know, all of that has to be taken into consideration when treating them yeah. and deciding on what medication to give them. And um, so a lot of times because of the stigma and discrimination, you know, 
entities and they have they have all the rights that they of wouldn't course. want their family to be involved or to know yeah and so we that is where we get faced with you know problems of compliance that mm. they they won't be taking the medication or so the family is not involved to help them yeah. and or maybe they're just tired too of all the medication they're already on for other things and they're like, well yeah. i'll skip this one today you know and don't and I realize was thinking the implications of that. of that. Even the psychological support to, uh, I mean, so even though medicine has progressed to where HIV can be seen as a condition that you can live with for a very long mm -hmm. time, it still is for many. The, the idea of contracting the infection, it's a death sentence, death sentence. but it's not anymore. It's with not anymore. proper health care, proper medication and adherence, you can live a great quality of life. But the psychological implications can be difficult to deal of with. Course. And of course. how would there, they be able to access counseling so if good. I'm an elder? I mean, Dr. Pot, you, you, you're in the clinic and you have an elderly woman come in and you suggest to her to take an HIV mm -hmm. test. That alone will come with some explanation there. Yes. Of course, because we do a pretest counseling. Yeah. We, we have to do a pretest counseling in where in which we would explain to them, well, you know, this can come back positive or negative, and uh, this is what will happen. If So we do do that counseling, and at that same time, you can evaluate that, that person's state of mind. Yeah. Um, at our clinic, because of the way the system is set up, we don't really do the, the CD4 and the viral load, yeah. and we don't issue the medication. So what we do is we refer them mm -hmm. to um, VCT, the yeah. Voluntary Counseling and um, Testing at Ministry Cleopatra. of Health, yeah. yeah. There's one here, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. so then they go over there and that is where they, the CD4, the viral load is ordered, they start their medication and counseling as well. Yeah, but clearly one of the bigger issues that you spoke of is, is and it is an issue of ageism, it's having a, a Mr. Dacus, I'll use you because it's a safe example, come in mm -hmm. and not even offering to have the test done. Um, not even thinking that perhaps That's I do need to that. have him in his battery of tests that he'll do, mm -hmm. also include an HIV test. So it seems that even the medical community needs to be of more course, aware. This is what I'm saying. Like even for myself that this topic came up, it had me thinking mm -hmm. because I hardly ever as a, a elder person will you have more than one sex partner? Are you being safe? Are you using a condom? Yeah. I never think of asking that. To well, you know, hardly we, ever. We had a case, and I won't call the name of the institution. We have two institutions in Belize, mm -hmm. Belize City and Cayo, right? Mm -hmm. Where we have older people. And, and we had a case that came into one, and the person, when the person came in, they didn't tell us her, or her well, we knew she was, Obviously, not in good health, but she was able to move around and everything. But it was not until after we have a, a part-time nurse, if I could call her that, mm -hmm. who eventually found out that this was an HIV-positive patient. Mm -hmm. And when the matter was posed to the family, they, they acted as if well, they didn't want to hear. It was as if, well, we don't want to hear that. Hmm. In other words, it seems to me that they knew, of course, that she had it, but they didn't want us at the institution to know because obviously we would start to say, well, listen, there are certain guidelines. Mm -hmm. And we try our best, Marlene, not to take in patients that are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. But once they are there, then we try to work with them, but we are not equipped for that. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a case that jumped out at me where the family themselves were didn't in despair. denial. Yes, yeah. they didn't want to to tell us, so that lady was brought in, and, and of course we have people that are trained there, and, and they said, but hey, this lady have shown all the symptoms of HIV, but nobody tell us anything. Mm -hmm. And eventually, well, she, she, she passed away, but they had to take her out of the home to, to an institution, you know, but, mm -hmm. but that, that stigma, Even it's prevalent. Yeah, it's yeah, but I, I think sad because in, in cases like this, one of the main things that you need is your family support. Not just because of your mental health, but when it comes to caring for you and the lifestyle changes, you know, that your diet needs mm -hmm. to change and all of these things so that you can live a better quality of life. So 
family support is very important. So that is that's a very mm. sad case. And to help proper adherence to the medication. To the medication but as it, well. It's not unique eh, because we have got to look at, you know, being diagnosed, there have to be a series yeah. of services being offered. Yeah. Because oh, it, it, it's common that there's, there are times family will not be there to support. They, they are, they, they, the fear that comes with it, the stigma that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we have, we have had a history of persons being abandoned by their, by their respective families. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, at the center there, there are clients that comes in and yeah. there are clients that would come in and they would want to access service. And you know, when I complete my assessment and I realize I start asking questions, something is wrong here and yeah. I do not deny them but I do referral and there's a challenge with the counter referral because you so we, we people may, will have challenges but where where are the support services yeah. I mean you're, you're diagnosed there is the fear you're taking your medication there are side effects with the medication mm -hmm. and uh, where where is that support where is that encouragement yeah either from the meds, how they take the meds, um, what, what follow-up tests that should be done. Are they doing these follow-up tests? Do they come to clinic? Are they delinquent? Where is the support? And at the same time, for older persons, there is a serious um, issue as it relates to financial management. Yeah. You know, how, where are they going to get the monies from for their treatment? To ensure that they 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 um you know get the right food yeah to maintain that or level of to wellness or even get in the system because some of these things are available through the Ministry of Health yeah. but you would have to ensure that yes. they're aware and you enroll in the program you know I, I think Gavin said it in the beginning we just have not thought of the elderly population and the implications of HIV there and I think today's conversation is the beginning of breaking mm -hmm. down that stereotype. Mm -hmm. HIV so. is yeah. still a highly discriminati discriminated um, infection in this mm -hmm. country, no matter what age in you are. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we can never stop explaining enough about the, the um, consequences of HIV, but I think we need to start to break down some of these barriers and help mm -hmm. to get the elderly population, one, educated. I, I grew up in an era we were always talking about uh, STIs and STDs. Now it may not be the same for other generations, especially if you're 70, 60, maybe you didn't talk about how to protect yourself from HIV mm -hmm. exactly. or how it's contracted. So where do you go? Recognizing the data, recognizing that you are a little less than 10% of the, the elderly population is a little less than 10% of the last new infections that were recorded. Mm -hmm. How do you break the barriers and the stigma now to educate, to test, and even maybe, I mean, do you have a bowl of condoms at HelpAge available? <laughs> 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 it, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm happy you said that. I want to jump in though from the, <laughs> from the gender perspective because <clears throat> it's troubling that we are having more men dying, older men dying, you know, and I want to support a recommendation. I mm -hmm. think it came from Dr. Manzanero mm -hmm. in his report. But he's suggesting, and I fully agree, that we need to educate our younger men at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. I don't think men <laughs> obviously ask to go to these kinds of workshops on any, anything at all when it comes yeah. to health, right? But particularly if you're going to be talking about how to protect yourself against HIV, um, we need to target men. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the 60 and over, I'm talking about men in their 30s and 40s because we need to start at that age, right? Yeah. It's going to be a challenge because we all know how some of us behave, right, Mr. Yeah. Courtney? <laughs> we don't even want to go to that time. <laughs> we don't even want to go to that time yeah. until when you almost look for dead and you yeah. say, why, why you take so long, uh, you know? Uh -huh. So, yes, Marlene, that's one of my suggestions. It's going to be a challenge because um, at LPH, most of our members are females. Mm. I got that generally, I believe, and you know that. Yeah. Out of, let's say, I don't know, let's say 5,000, I would say definitely at least about 85% of 
four members are, are females. Wow. And we have to fight to keep the men. Mm -hmm. So I try as a man to keep bringing in men at them up and level. But some of our branches are basically female dominated. When I say that, I mean in terms of the executive, right? Yeah. And I think we have to try and pull in some men at the executive level. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, those will be role models and say, well, if I say Mr. Jake has to do it, then that's not wrong. I will join that group. Mm -hmm. But again, it comes back to ageism because I have seen men around my age who would say, Choma, I'm not a fool that big. I don't go sit down with any old people. But I said, But you, Walter? <laughs> 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 he said, that he, I mean, We not even realize you have already jumped 60. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to quote unquote do everything that we do, but yeah. accept the fact that you have reached that age and we have this group and we have it almost in every district yeah, yeah. where you can socialize at least once a week. Yeah. But some of them tell me, no man, I have other things to do, I busy. Yeah. You know, so that's a suggestion. I don't know. In my yeah. Well, Marlene, I just want to let you know I went to BFLA last week and I pulled out some, got some condoms <laughs> and lubes. Good. <laughs> and leaflet. And they're there. No. Yes, and okay. we were yeah. participating in the NCA Expo, Good. the first. Mm -hmm. And so when I said to the, the secretary and the, the two volunteers, I said, you're going to take these condoms. And they start giggling. <laughs> I said, old men are taking the blue pills and <laughs> other pills. So kindly take these condoms. Uh -huh. But I need to go up and try and get some female condoms. you have any? That yes, yes. I need there to get are some female, female condoms. condoms so. Yeah. I, I'm serious. I mean, yeah. And while it will be an adjustment, as you mm -hmm. said, to the res clearly by the response, it's just a matter of making people aware that this is one of the threats um, that you need to be aware yeah. of. Yeah. Yes, sure. and, and just like everybody else. Yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah, I was about to say just um, just like the conversation we're having here. Um, before we even talk about STIs, just break the sort of taboo or stigma surrounding talking about older people and sex and sexuality. Because right? mm -hmm. once we recognize that fact, then we can deal with some then of these problems exactly. head on. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, and Dr. Pat, of course, you know, I think if an elderly person goes to visit a doctor, maybe not at your clinic, because you'll guide them properly, <laughs> but they want to ask for an HIV test, probably don't know how, um, because, I, even recognizing that somebody may be at B65 and never had an HIV test before. Sure. Um, and, and it may be an opportunity f for them to find out whether or not they are infected. What advice do you have to them? For the, for the elderly persons about advocating for themselves as well. Well, I don't think that they should have any reason to want to hold back. That yeah. They should just come forward and state, you know, I would like an HIV test. Uh, we're trying to, to um, break the stigma yeah so they themselves have to see themselves in that way and yeah. and accept that yes I'm having sex and and say it I need yeah. an HIV test I think something very important we need to look at too because you find out sometimes the males would send their their wives to get the HIV tests mm -hmm. and if it comes back negative they okay, feel I'm okay. Then they feel like they're I'm okay, okay. Yeah, that is I've not heard that. and that is not, not so you know so yeah. we have to encourage and husband, wives, and partners mm -hmm. all to get tested. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we are very grateful that you came in and, and really opened our eyes uh, to, this, to this situation and hopefully opened the eyes of our viewers as well. Um, just to be aware of the fact that HIV does uh, pose a threat to the elderly population as well. We must mm -hmm. be more open-minded and also acknowledge the fact that we must educate offer preventative measures, and also ensure that if they are tested and found positive, that we have the support as well. Thank you for coming in. It was a Thank pleasure. You We're gonna go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about an innovative award uh, looking at positive people in society. Please stay tuned.